Daniel chapter 2. The lectureship as we think about the book of Daniel. In Bible class, we did Daniel chapter 1. And we talked about periods of isolation, indoctrination, compromise, and confusion. And the fact that through all of it, Daniel and his friends remained faithful. How do you remain faithful when test after test after test after test come your way? Do they come to you? Do you have tests? Trials? Temptations? They kept coming and coming and coming. And, and these young men remained faithful. And, and so they've gotten through the test. They've been faithful. Life is good forevermore. Did you ever get through a test? An illness? Something in your life? I can breathe now. And then all of a sudden... Test number 15 comes your way. And, and it just seems as if for some of us, it just come, keeps coming and coming. I, I like to laugh about uh, cars, automobiles. When you make your last payment on a car, make your last payment. Life's good. I don't have a car payment anymore. I need to go get something else. I don't have a car payment anymore. What happens within the first month of paying off your car? Within the first month. Something breaks. Got it paid for. No more expenses. And then if it's a transmission these days, well, I just want to buy another car. Or a motor for that matter. But whatever's going on with the car. Things happen and sometimes they seem to pile up on us. Well, for Daniel and his friends, a little bit of time goes on, and they have a bigger problem than they had to start with. We're going to begin in Daniel chapter 2, verse 10 and 11. We'd already read that during our, our Bible reading for this morning, but I want to look at those two verses as we begin. Nebuchadnezzar has had some dreams that bothered him. And he wanted to know, what do these dreams mean? Y'all have any weird dreams? Dreams where you wake up and say, I don't know what was going on. But something wasn't good. And, and we have the recurring dream. And I don't want to go to sleep tonight because I'm going to have that dream again tonight. Well, here's Daniel with his friends. And Nebuchadnezzar has dreams that really bother him. So he calls his magicians and enchanters and sorcerers and astrolog astrologers to tell him what he had dreamed. Daniel 2, beginning in verse 10. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore, there is no king, lord, nor ruler that asks such a thing of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. It's a rare thing that the king requireth, and there is none other that can show it before the king, except the gods whose dwelling is not in flesh. Well, they're kind of right, aren't they? We're not even going to bother with all the usual people. They, they can't do it. And they wind up with only gods. Well, they're part right. Only the God could help with this particular dream. Because they tell Nebuchadnezzar that, he's angry. He gets upset about the information and decides, you've got to understand who Nebuchadnezzar is, he, he's not a good guy. And when they, they tell him nobody can interpret your dreams, Nebuchadnezzar says, all of the wise men ought to be killed. And that included Daniel and his friends. Everybody who I thought was going to help me, get rid of them. That's leadership. I'm going to get rid of anybody who disagrees with me. The commander of the guard goes to get Daniel and to take him to the execution. Being tested. We're with Daniel right now. They're coming to get us right now. Execution soon. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking about? Execution any minute. Now, now we like to say, well, let it be better. Yeah. 
heaven's better. We like, we like to say that. And, and it's true. But I've met very, very few people who've said, you know, I'd give it all up right now. Sometimes those who are ill will tell us that they're ready to go home. I understand that. But there are some things in my life that I kind of like. I like living where I am now and preaching where I am now. I'm kind of fond of my wife. And some other things that go on in life. Uh, something to live for. Yesterday we spent the day in Grenada. Our oldest grandson was playing baseball in a tournament down there. Have something to live for? Want to go see the grandkids? Daniel, in the morning, death comes. We've had experiences of trouble. It may not be that trouble, but we've had experiences. I've had health issues. Some of you have had worse health issues than I have. And, and they get to us. Some talk about how long their doctor list is. Of how many different specialists they go to see. Or how big the medicine cabinet needs to be these days to hold all of their medicines. And, and it's easy to decide, why? What's all this matter? What's it all mean? Financial issues. Brethren sometimes have some pretty deep financial issues. We've watched loved ones pass away. We've been concerned over spiritual issues. I remember a time when I was uh, first in college that the young men there were scared to death that we were going to war. It was one of those little skirmishes that looked like war. And, and they were discussing reinstating the draft. And as soon as class would be over, all the guys went to the student center where a big television was and stood silently watching. Are they, are the, are they going to come get us? Are they going to ask us to come? Those were tough times. Some of you may have been called to go to service, and I'm thankful that you did. But tough times to think about what might happen next. Daniel shows how to handle the problem. He didn't panic. He's told he's going to be executed. He does not get real upset. He does not jump to conclusions. He does not start running. He does not fight the guard. He simply asks why and begins to listen. Daniel then goes to the king and says, Can I interpret for you? Daniel chapter 2, beginning in verse 16 and going through verse 23. Daniel went in and desired of the king that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. There was a secret revealed to Daniel in a night vision. Daniel blessed the God of heaven, and Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and forever, for wisdom and might are his. He changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He knoweth what is in the darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. I thank thee, and I praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me now what we desired of thee. For thou hast made known unto us the king's matter. Would you say that Daniel and the friends were facing a test? You're about to be killed. And it was not even really because of his faith this time. It's because I just don't like wise men anymore. And I'm going to kill them. Test. I, I've had a few people through the years that threatened to do bodily harm to me. I've never had anybody threaten to kill me. I can't imagine. If they threatened and had a real way to do it. And told me about their real way to do it. I, I would be scared. Just a little bit afraid. 
Daniel shows us how to respond. He shows us how to handle our test in a godly manner. The first thing is, let me go talk to God. Let me go talk to God. I'll come back to you, but let me go talk to God. And Daniel says to the king, we can take care of this. Daniel lifted the God of love before this pagan king and then allowed God to work. Daniel showed the king the real king. It's not a Christian nation, Jewish nation. These are people who believe in their own gods and don't have any use for us and our gods. Daniel says, let's talk about my God. He will deliver me. He will help interpret this dream. And so Daniel begins to tell the dream. Drop down to verse 31. Daniel 2 beginning with verse 31 and going through verse 35. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them into pieces. And became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away. That no place was found for them. The stone that smote the image became a great mountain. And filled the whole earth. Well, let me tell you, did, did the king tell Daniel what he had dreamed about? As far as we know he didn't. And Daniel comes back and says, let me tell you about it. And describes this person and, and different parts to that person. By the way, has anybody mentioned that Daniel's not always the easiest book to study from? But we're seeing all these parts of this body. And then this stone that crushes the body. Because Daniel has prayed and now he's gone to tell the king about his prayer. Secondly, Daniel speaks the truth. Daniel tells the king that God has given him the interpretation for the dream. Daniel speaks the truth. Truth can be tough. I've had folks ask me questions and I, I really didn't want to give them the answer. We'll move around the answer. One of the, not religious, I'll get off of that one for a second. My mom had the beginning stages of Alzheimer's. And she was driving. Uh, she lived at that point in Hamilton, Alabama, and had come to Fulton to the Walmart store there. She still liked to make things. And she was told the Fulton Walmart had good patterns. So she drove to the Fulton Walmart. And when she came out of the Walmart, instead of turning right and getting back on what was then just 78, she turned left and headed directions she had never been in her life. She went by the Columbus Air Force Base and thought that people were shooting at her. She wound up in Starkville and ran out of gas. She was convinced her car was ruined. And I, I don't guess I can drive. My car's ruined. Well, truth was she had run out of gas. The wrecker put a little bit of gas in it and called me and said, your mama's car is fine. She just ran out of gas. So we talked to mother a while, and my sister came, and they, she was actually staying at the apartment my boys were living in while they went to Mississippi State. Immediately, tell me, about, tell me about the car. Tell me about the car. Next day, she calls. Have you heard anything about the car yet? We're ready for her to be done driving. Some of you have been there. We're ready for, well, we're taking care of your car. That was not a lie. It was in my driveway. We were taking care of the car. Day two, we're taking care of the car. Day three, we're taking care of the car. I finally called my sister and say, look, she's asked too many times. I've eventually got to really tell her the truth. That's a hard phone call. To say, Mama, your car's fine. I'm going to sell it. And you need to quit driving. 
So for two or three days, I'm, I'm not lying to her, but I don't want to tell her all of the truth right then. Here we are in Daniel chapter 2. We're going to drop down to verse 36 and read through verse 45. Daniel 2, starting with verse 36. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art his head of gold. After thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and another kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. The fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh into pieces and subdueth all things, as iron that breaketh all these shall it break into pieces and bruise. Whereas thou sawest the feet and toes part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided, but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay. As the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong, partly broken. In the days of the king, verse 44, God of heaven will set up a king which shall never be destroyed. The kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all other nations. For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof is sure. How much does the king get at this point? Daniel said, here's what's going to happen. Kingdom's going to be broken up. Kingdom after kingdom after kingdom. Things are happening. We read about all these stones and particles that were a part of this body. They are important. They all meant something. The head of gold represented Babylon, ruling 612 to 539 B.C. The chest of silver representing Medo-Persia from 539 to 331. The belly of thighs of bronze was Greece in 331 to 63 BC. And the legs of iron were of Rome from 63 BC to 476 AD. We are ultimately then introduced to the kingdom that never fades. Nebuchadnezzar, all of these kingdoms are going to fail. But there's one coming. There's one coming that will never, never fail. Thirdly, what happens when the truth is heard? Nebuchadnezzar hears the truth. What happens? Have you ever not wanted to hear something? Not wanted to know about something? I mute the television. That's all I can listen to. Not going to live. When somebody else comes on, I'll turn it back on, but I'm not listening to them. Somebody's saying something to you. You, you remember coming your ears? I don't want to listen, don't want to listen, or, or fingers and don't want to listen, don't want to hear this. Do you think the king wanted to hear all this? What's going to happen to you? He's the strongest person politically, militarily in the world. And suddenly Daniel says, yeah, for a little while, somebody will take your place. Then somebody else. And then comes God's kingdom. The idea that somebody is going to take your place is a tough thing to swallow. We've discussed at Chapel Hill my age. And they frequently ask, how long will you stay with us? And they're asking, when are you planning on... They asked me when I was hired, how long will you stay? And they were asking in a form of, we want you to stay a long time because we just went through hiring a preacher and we don't want to do that again. How long will you stay? At least once a month, one of them will look at me and say, have you changed your mind? 
We don't need you to change your mind. We need you to stay. You promised us. You know what's going to happen in seven years? I won't be there. Somebody else will come in to be the new preacher at chapel. Do you think things might change? Things might change with a new... I don't mean doctrine, but preachers have habits and preachers have things they like to do and like to have and go through and, and things will probably change. When I was at Chapel Hill the first time, the preacher before me came back after a year or two to visit. And when he visited, I saw this mob. Everybody in the congregation surround him. And they're hugging him. And they're telling him how much they love him. I'm over here. (laughs) I'm over here. To the point that it didn't bother me. The point that some of the members were coming. We love you too. We're sorry. We shouldn't have paid that much attention to him. My answer was, if you had not paid that much attention to him, I would have quit. Because he preached for you for four years. And he deserves the love that you're showing him. But it was still kind of funny. Somebody had taken a place. Nebuchadnezzar, somebody's coming. The truth is heard. Then he had a decision. Remember the decisions from Bible class? He has a decision to make. Nebuchadnezzar shows the options he had and are the same options we have. Nebuchadnezzar, you're going down. Option one, we can hide under a rock and in the end be crushed, defeated, destroyed. I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Don't want to talk about it. Don't want to know. Nothing's going to happen to me. Go hide under a rock and eventually the rock crushes. I I like stories. I was teaching a a class in Nashville Thursday. I I teach uh, communication classes at a couple of community colleges. I was teaching the class and we were talking about what makes us do the things that we do. And I was remembering a time when in my hometown, they still had a drive-in theater. And that was it. I mean, there, was, there was no fast food in Centerville. There was no walk-in movie. You had the drive-in. And I knew some of the police officers in town, and they were laughing that they would be at the drive-in that weekend. Why? All deputies are on call, all Police officers from the city are on call. They will be at the drive-in this weekend. Why? Smokey and the Bandit was going that weekend on the big screen. Some of you are looking around, Smokey and the Bandit. Some of us remember. And remember that cars would uh, break the speed limit in Smokey and the Bandit? And his statement was, teenagers are invincible. Nothing will happen to me. And that when they would come out of the theater from a movie like that, they all left in a hurry. And flying down the road. So they stayed parked out there to try to slow them down and say, you're you're not invincible. And the speed limit still works in our town. We can hide. We can do something about it. The rock can crush us, or for Nebuchadnezzar, we can be on the rock. We can rest on the rock. Chapter 2, verse 46 and verse 47. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, fell on his face and worshipped Daniel and commanded that they should offer an oblation and sweet odors to him. The king answered to Daniel and said, Of a truth it is that your God is a God of gods and a Lord of kings and a revealer of secrets, seeing thou couldst reveal this secret. Even though he's told he's going to depart, Nebuchadnezzar says, you're God. Your God took care of things. And now I know. So in Daniel chapter 2, I want to go back to the beginning. We all have tests. We all have trials. We all have times when we're not sure 
You remember, you remember bad things happen in threes? And you're going, I'm on about seven right now. I'm not sure where the three went. But bad things happen. Physically, emotionally, and spiritually. But the good news for us is that even though we'll be tried and tested, even though bad things may happen to us, the good news is that Jesus the Christ has gained the victory. And because He has gained the victory, we may as well. No matter what happens, God is with us until the end, and He is with us throughout eternity. Let's do that again. No matter what happens, God will always be with us. I don't know where God is. He's right there beside of you. He knows what you're going through. He understands. He will be with you for all eternity. A person who dies physically without Christ will also die a second death of separation from God for all of eternity. Those who are with Christ, can you imagine? Can you imagine that day? Those who are with Christ. And, and we first see heaven. We see our Savior. Can you imagine what that's going to be? Oh, there are all sorts of questions about what heaven's going to be like. I don't answer many of those questions. My answer is it's going to be a whole lot better than anything I've ever seen. And I'm ready to go. Are you? Are you trusting in God regardless of what happens? We want to offer the invitation this morning. If you need to become a Christian today to have Jesus on your side, we would invite you, because you've already heard the word, to change, to repent, to go another direction, to confess that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. And today be buried in Christ in baptism. Jesus is with you. Your sins have been washed away. If you're here today and you need the prayers of this church, we want to help you with that as well. If you need to make a public response, we invite you while we stand. While we sing.